In today's age, our focus has shifted to the use of gadgets on our day-to-day lives. From smart appliances to the latest phone and gaming computers. These are just some examples of what we use in the so-called digital age. But it hasn't always been this way. Back then, cell phones didn't even exist and entertainment appliances like TVs were hard to come by. So, what did the people during that time use to entertain themselves? That would be none other than traditional games. We must all be familiar with this scene. Meeting up with our friends in the afternoon to play games like Patentero, Luxong Baka, Tombong Preso, and many more. It was a way to pass the time and socialize with other kids, and also a good way to be physically active. And yet, despite all of this, traditional games seems to be losing its spark amongst younger generations. With the emergence of easily available gadgets, most kids just turn to online video games to be entertained, perfectly content to stay in their own homes. Traditional games are just one of the many things that our culture offers. Not only is it enjoyable, but it also fosters socialization amongst children. Games are one of the things that we can promote by showing just how good it could be. Traditional games that would befit the current generation better is a great way to bring back this part of our culture. Introducing games like Sunka, which could still be played indoors, is a good way to start. The aim of the game Sunka is to capture as many shells as you can and to place them into your ulo or head. To begin a new game, you must place the sunka board horizontally between the two players so that each player has seven houses in front of him and the heads should be at the far ends to the left and right. Each player's ulo is the whole pit to his extreme left. Next, take the 98 shells or beads or seeds or pebbles and place seven into each of the bahais or houses. You are now ready to start your game of sunka. Sunka is a turn-based game, however, the rules of Sunka are unusual in that the first turn for each player is taken at the same time and therefore the game has a real-time element to it. Some players attempt to gain an advantage by delaying their start in order to react to their opponent's first move and this is perfectly acceptable within the rules of the game. However, if you want to start your game in a peaceful and fair manner, you can immediately take turns and decide who will play first by playing Bato Bato Peak. For the first turn, a player may decide which of the seven houses directly in front of him on his side of the Sunka board he wishes to begin with. He picks up all of the shells from his chosen bahay and he should then move his hand around the board in a clockwise direction. Dropping one shell in each house or head he passes over, including all of the houses on both sides of the board and the player's own head, but not the opponent's head. Where you release the last shell from your hand is very important, as this dictates whether you may continue your turn or not. If you land in your own head, then you may continue your turn from any of your houses. If you drop your last shell into a house that already had shells in it, then you may pick up every shell in that house, including the one you dropped, and continue your turn. However, if you drop your last shell into an empty house, then your turn is over. If this happens in one of your own houses on your own side of the Songka board, then you may claim all of the shells in the house directly opposite from your opponent's side of the board, and drop them in your head. Although the turn is still over, once a player has ended their turn, he must wait for the opponent to also end his turn and from that point on, players simply take it in turns to play their turns. For each subsequent turn, you may only start with a house on your side of the board. The game ends when neither of the players can play on. Some other ways we could bring back traditional Filipino games include introducing children to these types of games. We can start with simple games like Jackstone and, and the likes. 
that the family can be together. Not only would it foster a better relationship with both parent and children, it would also be a learning experience for the child who is growing up. Other ways we could do to bring up traditional games is by using them as parlor games during events like birthday, reunion, and others. We could also use them as pastime since even I would really love to play these traditional games once again since it is really fun, it deepens the bond you have with your friends, and it feels very nostalgic. In conclusion, traditional games are a part of the extensive, rich, and colorful culture of our country. Therefore, it is our aim as Filipinos to keep this aspect alive. We sincerely hope you enjoyed our vlog. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again soon.